Last time we made these randomly wandering AI characters. If you could walk for me, that would be freaking great. You walk around. There we go. You're trying to walk around a bit. That's what we made last time. Today, we're going to uh, get started on the first little bit of what you see here. And that is an AI that will shoot at me when it sees me. As you can see, there's lots of room for improvement. We won't get to the actual shooting today either. We will just be talking about the bit um, where it perceives you, because that in and of itself is complicated enough. So what we have here is the things that we made last time. We made our character, our movement task, our behavior tree, our blackboard, and our AI controller. We're going to be opening up the AI controller, which is over here. And to the AI controller, we're going to add an AI perception. So we have AI perception over here. And uh, we're going to add perception, sense config, add an array element, and add in sight. You can also set a dominant sense. I think this only comes into play if you have multiple senses, but you know, you might as well just set it to sight so that nothing weird happens. And then it's very important in your player character, which in this case will be our first person uh, character over here. When you open that up, you also need an AI perception stimuli source, which you can just get by AI perception stimuli source, as you would expect. Uh, and inside that, we're going to go to register source as, and then AI sense site. You also want to enable uh, auto register as source so that you don't have to like trigger an event or anything. Then back inside the AI controller, there is a lot of things uh, under these submenus that you can change, like the side radius, the loose side radius. The side radius is when the AI starts perceiving you, but if it starts perceiving you and you take a step back, it won't lose that perception of you until you reach the loose side radius. So if you want them to be not able to see you, but once he sees you, it'd be very difficult to get out of his range. You would set this, uh, for instance, like 150, very, very small. You have to be right up against them to actually have them see you. But then, for instance, set this to 5,000 so that you have to run away very, very, very far in order to uh, lose it. That being said, the usual 3,000 and 3,500 kind of work well enough. Peripheral vision is exactly what you assume it to be. If you set it to 180, its peripheral vision is going to be 180 degrees. If you set it to 90, it's going to be more or less what you would normally expect. Having the perception selected, you will have to right click here and then add event for AI perception. Event dispatchers, and you're going to go to the bottom one. Add on target perception updated. So this means that when it goes from seeing something to not seeing something, or from not seeing something to seeing something, this event will get triggered. We have an actor and we have a stimulus. So we right click on stimulus and we split that structure pin. Because the only thing we really care about at this point in time is whether or not a stimulus was successfully sent. This will allow us to know whether or not the character has just entered or just exited the sensing range. So we're also going to want to check whether or not it's actually our player character that we're uh, working with here. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag off the actor. We're going to cast to uh, whatever your player character is. In this case, that's a BP first person character. And we don't really do anything with this character uh, pin at all. It's just to check whether or not it's that specific character. So after that, we're going to set a value as a bool. And you might see that the thing you need isn't here. Turn off context sensitive. And now we can set blackboard value as bool. We're going to have to get the blackboard, obviously, uh, for that. We're going to have to uh, make literal name. And uh, we can call this something like uh, can see player. Uh, and we hook that up into them. This is important that the, it's the exact name that you're going to give your blackboard key in a second. And then the bool value is going to be equal to uh, stimulus successfully sensed or not. And that's everything we need to do here. So now we can move back to our behavior tree. Which, if you remember correctly, looked like this. It's not much of a behavior tree. Nothing much is getting decided here. It's literally just doing one thing, then the other, then one thing, then the other. And as we discussed last time, it's mostly something we could have done within normal blueprints. This is where things get interesting. Because now, after the route, we're going to add a selector. A selector will uh, first try to do what's on the left-hand side. 
And if that does not work, it will uh, go to the right side. Why would it ever not be able to apply this sequence? That's because we're going to add a decorator to it in a second. First, we're going to go here, new key, bool. And as I said, it's very, very important that we uh, get this exact text, capitalization and all, as the name for our new bool key. So now that we have that key made, we can go to add decorator blackboard. Once we have made that blackboard, we can select it and then say blackboard key can see player is not set. So now the random movement will only ever happen when the AI cannot actually see our player. But we also need to give it something else to do if it doesn't do this. So we're going to drag off this again. We're going to um, make another sequence. And this one we're going to uh, just copy over this waiting node. We're going to start with waiting. The wait time for this one is going to be a little shorter. I'm going to say one second with a random deviation of 0.3. And just to be sure that this works as intended, uh, we can copy over this blackboard condition and select our sequence here, paste the blackboard condition, and then set this to is set. So now, every time this tree runs, it'll go to the left, check whether or not can see player is set. If it's not set, it'll do this sequence. If it is set, it'll go back to the selector and pick the next one down the tree. Then can see player is set, should be true. Then it'll wait and do whatever action you put after it in the sequence. You probably also should go over to uh, your decorators and observe a board's self, lower priority, or both. I would advise doing both here. So what that means is if you're in the middle of doing one of these sequences, uh, let's do both. If you're in the middle of doing one of these sequences and your player changes from being inside to not being inside, it doesn't finish uh, the, the waiting tasks here. It just immediately jumps back up to the roots and runs the behavior tree again so that you never get stuck with an enemy AI that's just doing the wait node thing before moving on to doing more AI things. It gets a lot more snappy. And then once you get into the game, the moment the AI senses you, uh, it will start doing whatever task you set it to do. In this case, that'll be uh, shooting me, but that could also be chasing you, right? You could say, if, for instance, you see me, you start moving towards my location, and it's not that difficult to do that. As a matter of fact, it's actually easier than the shooting thing. So uh, you can really put any task you want after this. This is just about how you can sense the player. It's relatively easy, but it's a very, very powerful tool. Because as you can see, it's sensing me, it's tracking me. The tracking will be a point we talk about in the next video, though.